Minotaur headquarters in Berlin, the Cold War reaches a new crisis. The Russians haul down the red flag, signifying Soviet withdrawal from the four-power command that has governed Berlin since the war's end. Taking no pains to disguise the fact that they want the Western allies out of Berlin, the Reds begin a blockade of the city. Tracks are removed from the roadbeds, and trains are stopped for so-called technical reasons. Barges carrying food and coal find the waterways suddenly closed to them. Highways are blocked and deserted. The aim of the Russians to starve the entire city into submission backfires completely. In the shadow of the Soviet sector, 300,000 Berliners gather in protest and pledge support to the Western Allies. Meanwhile, Anthony Eden arrives in the German capital for an emergency meeting, as does the French military commander, General Koenig. Later, America's General Lucius D. Clay, speaking for the Western Allies, announces their decision. We have a right to be in Berlin, and we intend to maintain that right. But how, ask freedom-loving people the world over and anxiously await the answer. Can this be true, or is it just an alluring hot weather mirage to lead us on? To answer the question, I'm told this is Atlantic City's competition. For what to draw? Attention, please. Your attention, please. All personnel of the 19th Troop Carrier Squadron report to 19th Operations immediately. Now what? Somebody forgot to clean the carburetor. We all got to stand in the corner. Sounds like a hop to Australia to me. Well, say that. I got a date in an hour. What's the name? I'll keep it for you. I'm good at that sort of thing. Who isn't? Who is? Who will gather in September to buy for the missing out In which capacity the winner here? And as soon as ready, proceed to Fairfield to soon California. At ease. Then to Westover Field, Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. This detonation will be for the purpose of operational training and will be for a period of 45 days. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, 45 days. Pardon me, Major. My name is Kowalski. I'm a GCA operator. Yes? I was wondering, sir, if I could be replaced on this mission. Why? Well, sir, if we're going where I think we're going, I wouldn't do a very good job. What have you got against Westover Field? Nothing, sir, but I got an awful lot against Germany, and I got a hunch that's where we're heading for. The Air Force isn't run on hunches, Sergeant. That's why we put lights on runways. Have a good trip. Yes, sir. Why don't you jokers stop kidding yourselves? You're going to Germany. That's where you're going. You know, come on, see, huh? We're going to let a girl like the major set. Didn't you guys see the newsreel just now? The Russians blockaded Berlin. It happened two weeks ago. Don't you read the newspapers? They're flying stuff in on C-47s, but they don't carry enough, the papers say. Well, C-54s are bigger, and they carry more, and you're the guys that are going to carry it. Great job, Great job. Great job. we're going. Not we, just you boys. They don't need any ground grippers like me on this trip. Well, did you hear anything special? No, but I just put 1,500 pounds of coffee aboard there, and I haven't heard of any coffee shortage in Massachusetts lately. Yes, sir, you all are on your way to feed the crowd. You fly boys get all the breaks. While y'all are up there enjoying yourself flying night and day, just think of me down here in Honolulu, out on that stinking Waikiki beach. Just bathing and sunning myself all day, sipping Tom Collins all night. I can't stand the thought of it. But I'll try, boys. Off Vita's then, y'all.
Down there someplace is a gal from Scranton who thought she was going dancing with me tonight. Down there someplace is a boat that'll dock in the morning. My wife and two kids in it. I haven't seen them for six months. Well, the Major said it'd only be 45 days. That's what they said when they sent me to the Philippines in 41. Hey, fellas, hold it. I was just listening to Winchell. Kowalski's right. We're going to Berlin. Oh. Berlin! Oh, Winchell says they're bringing 50 ports from Alaska, Tokyo, Cali, Panama, Puerto Rico, Honolulu, Alabama, Florida, Mitchell. Oh! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, Kowalski, who do you like in the center of the Hollywood Park? Oh, Stuart is. Send back the flag clerk to make up me voice. Right away. And if it gets cold back here during the night, don't call me. I'll be asleep. Good night. Good night. Seven two two three. Who are you and where are you from? Over. Uh, this is Air Force seven two two three. Nineteen troop carrier squadron, Hickam Field, Honolulu. Rhine Main Tower to seven two two three. Stand by for further instructions. Over. Roger. Seven two two three. Standing by. Air Force six four two one. The Rhine Main Tower. Over. Rhine Main Tower to six four two one. Where are you from? Over. Rhine Main Tower six four two one. We're fifty fourth troop carrier squadron from last. Over. Rhine Main Tower. Air Force nine nine. Over. Where are we from? Well, we're the 20th of Rainy, Puerto Rico. Over. Why this place here caught it, didn't it? Not enough. Well, they should have used the A-bomb. Rhine Main Tower to 7223. Make a right turn and end the runway. You'll find some of your squadron in parking area. Park there. What's the matter, you fellas? Cold? Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> I told you to take warm clothes. You all ain't going to Germany. It just don't make good sense. Well, honey, child, you all is here. And before you're through, you all's going to wish you never left the old plantation. Oh, oh, I'm making sure I heard you guys. Oh, 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 hey, fellas. Hi, wait in the building. Someone will come on and let me show you where your bullets are. Hey, how about pulling up to the dry spot? Man, this is a dry spot. You see the rest of the beard. It's up to your elbow here. So we don't have to be here a while. You'll come right to the same spot here on your day off and walk around because it's so dry. Hey, this has got more class than the Savoy. Oh, 
This is Temple Off Airways. You have another unidentified aircraft following you. He'll probably go by you in a minute or so. Oh, you were 59 seconds late, boy, and he didn't go by. He went through. How close? I don't know, but he picked up two sacks of our coal.
with that only 200 feet and a quarter of a mile, I guess you could use GCA over there at the apartment house. You used it like money from home. German? Mostly some DPs. What do you think you're shoving? Bitter, bitter. Don't give me bitter, bitter. Stay away from me. Come on, come on. What do you want to do, start another war? I'll check in. Okay, I'll look at next trip. Well, I'm asleep. Just leave your car. So long. Thanks for the lift, Lieutenant. Uh, which way's operations? It's over there. Uh, so long. So long, Lieutenant. Take it easy, Pardon me, sir. Yes, Sergeant. Is it all right if I uh, leave the field for a while? <laughs> I'd like to take a look and see what Berlin looks like. Not allowed, Sergeant. You mean we have to scatter out all the time we're here? You know how long we'll be here? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? And you gotta stay right for the plane. Four hours ago, it was so nice and clean. Well, if this thing keeps going, wait till you see it four months from now. Oh, brother. Today, many people are gathered here to celebrate a milestone in the history of this truly amazing air operation. 
Only a moment ago, when plane number 37 touched down on the north runway, it brought the total of airlift flights to the city to 100,000. To express their profound gratitude, representatives of the people of Berlin are present to present gifts to the crew of number 37. The honor guard of the Office of Military Government is also present, not in a moment, but now the lieutenant appears to be ready to give his first command. to escort the crew to the microphones here beside me where the brief ceremony will be held. I wonder where they're going now. They're going to spell out Navy. Must be some brass someplace. Well, this way. Nope. Well, this way either. Fellas, I got a feeling this is us. Oh, it can't be. It must be a mistake. You boys are elected for something. and in fact. And so I'm giving to you Captain this case a thanks to you from men of Berlin. Best accept. I accept this, not for myself, but for all those connected with Operation Biddle. Not just the Americans, the French, and the Latin, I mean British too. Thanks. Now, Helmut Brauker, 10 years old, representing the children of Berlin, will make his presentation to co-pilot Lieutenant Alfred Freiberger of St. Petersburg, Florida. Helmut, there's not one little old thing to be afraid of. Go on, say your speech, just like I told you. Go on now, go on. Stewart said what I was going to say, so I'll just say Dr. Shane. Good boy, good boy. I have a chocolate bar. Now, 
now to the flight engineer, Technical Sergeant Daniel McCullough from St. Paul, Minnesota. The presentation will be made by Frau Frederica Burkhardt. Sergeant McCullough, I offer you this simple gift from all the women of Berlin, from the wives and mothers and from those who are alone. We have watched your planes bring to this unfortunate city not only food and coal, but serums and medicines without which hundreds would have perished. We have watched your planes take out sick and undernourished children and return them healthy and well-fed and happy. Now, this action tasha may appear to you to be empty, but believe me, it's filled with the gratitude and admiration of hundreds of thousands of women. Please take it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Give them a kiss, will you? Yeah, mark and mit their coats then. Nein, nein, machen mit der Brose, grateful cousin. All right, I will. Hang on, Sarge, you'll get a draw. That's it, Sarge. Well, that was funny. Well, you all move over there. We want to get your sticks together, huh? Get right over there with this. Come on, Sarge. Back up a little bit, will you? Yeah, get right over there. Hey, Sarge, set that thing down, will you? Take her by the arm. Go ahead. My husband was killed in Russia. Sorry. That seems so long ago. I wish we had time to have a little talk. Perhaps we'll meet again sometime. Uh -uh. They won't let us into Berlin. What, not even for a little while? Well, maybe if I'm very lucky, my plane catches on fire. Yeah, they might give me a couple hours. I'm lucky like that. Did I get to see you? I see, really, huh? Phone? <laughs> I haven't got a phone, but I give you the number of the person that lives next to me. It's 754532. Right. You know, I might even set that plane on fire myself. <laughs> Okay, that's it, fellas. The boys have to get back to work. Hey, uh, can I get a picture of him where he's kissing the girl, huh? Yeah. Peter Sean. Sean? Yeah. Peter Sean. Sean? Peter Sean. St. Paul. Yeah. Well, the St. Paul Dispatch is one of our member papers. They've been asking me to do one of those hometown boy flies lift stories. I don't usually work with this box, but both of our photographers are sick. Would you mind helping me out with some pictures and answering some questions? I don't know. I've I've read some of those pale blue yonder stories. I feel pretty silly. No, this has got a different angle. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Look, tell you what I want to do. I want to follow you and a load of flour from Rhine, Maine, into Berlin, through the warehouses, with the flour winding up as a loaf of bread in some kid's arms. I see. Uh, you mean I'd, uh, I'd have to come to Berlin? Hmm? For a day or two, it wouldn't take more than a couple of hours' work, though. You know, sir, that, uh, that kind of story hasn't ever been done before. It's funny, my mother writes to me, and she says a lot of people ask her, what happens to the food after Danny delivers it? That's that after I deliver it. Well, how do I know? I've never been outside Tempelhof. Well, you'll do it then. You can't get me into Berlin. I'll talk to headquarters. You know, the Air Force doesn't mind a little publicity now and then. They don't. I didn't know that. It's very interesting indeed. Fine, I'll pick you up in Rhine, Maine in a couple of days. Good deal. All right, okay. Thanks. Tell me, Sergeant, 
Do you find this life exciting? And fascinating. Just fascinating. The last time I had this much fun, I was in a Jap prison camp and lost 79 pounds. What were you doing, playing poker with English money? Huh? Some huh? joke, huh? Lieutenant. Some joke. Aren't they amusing, Mr. O'Malley? Yeah, and fascinating. Just fascinating. But what I want to know is how you men fly at night. How do you do it when it's so dark outside? Well, you see, there's a night out on this wing tip, and there's one out there, and there's one on the tail. So all I do is keep the plane between the three lights. I'm going to ask that question. How long have you been flying the lift, Sarge? Uh, since the first week in July. We all came over together. 19th troop carrier from Honolulu. We're, we're part of the 53rd now. How do you like your job? Oh, oh, it's a wonderful opportunity, and I'm grateful for it. You, you really learn your job on this operation. It gives you the feeling of accomplishing something. <laughs> Approaching the building area on a heading of 270. We're coming in GCA. Listen to it. A friend of mine, Beth is in the business. We're now over the building area going high on glide pan, the gesture rate of descent. Glide pan improving, quarter mile from touchdown, on course on the glide pan. Approaching the end of runway, on course on the glide pan. Well, this is the whole setup. You understand the principle of GCA? I wouldn't want to bet on it. Well, without getting too technical, it uh, works something like this. See, the antennas on top of the shack send out radio signals which hit an object and are reflected back here and show up on these scopes. Like an echo. Only a little faster, Junior. They go out and come back with the speed of light. Like a fast echo. Now, this scope is a 360-degree scan, and it revolves with the uh, antenna on the roof, you see? Now, these spots that you see here, we call them uh, permanent echoes, those stationary spots. Well, they're houses and buildings and chimneys and so forth. Now, the ones that are moving with the tails on them, you see them there? No, where? Right there. There's one, there's another one. Mm -hmm. Well, those are planes coming in and going out. Now, this uh, scope isn't critical enough to land the plane, so we have these two, see? Now, here's the approach. That's the beginning of the runway. And over here, that's the glide path. Now, any deviation in the normal descent is shown up in this meter right here. Where? Well, if you look through the glass, you can see it. Now, he's bringing one in now. You see him? He's 50 feet too high. Mm -hmm. Well, now, this is the course scope, which shows whether you're too far to the left or the right. And here is the lateral approach, which shows the end of the runway. You see that spot there? Yeah. Well, we just keep steering them in. We're right down the middle. Come on outside. I want to show you something. Sergeant. Where can I telephone? There's one down the corner. Good. 
You know someplace I could take it for dinner? Not around here. I know a spot where they don't bother you. Look, why don't I pick up my shotzi and we all have dinner? You've got a shotzi? After four months, even I get tired of looking at nothing but blips on a radar scope. That little half pint works in a mobile snack bar. I'm not sure you'd latch on to some American secretary up at Amgut. No, with them, it's perhaps I can see you on Thursday. How do I know I want to see her on Thursday? With Gertie, it's different. If I want to see her, I see her. If I feel like talking, she talks, and if I don't feel like it, she keeps her mouth shut. Anyway, she gives me one day's service on my laundry. The X takes a week. Idea. Look, they belong in the gutter, and if they don't get out of my way, I'm going to push them there. Got a coin? Barbarossa. Pite? 26 Barbarossa. It's over here in the field. Uh, Barbarossa Strasse 26. 20. No, 26. Neben München. Yeah. Danke schön, yeah. Bitte, bitte. What's the matter? Don't you trust your German? For me, they get only English. If they don't understand me the first time, I keep hollering at them until they do. Where does that get you? I learned my German the hard way, and while I'm around, that's the way they're going to learn English. Now, don't start feeling sorry for them. They hate our guts. The situation was reversed. They kick your teeth in twice a day. Now, listen, Sie, I want Barbarossa 26 neben München. Yeah, that's da drin, yeah. And here, we can it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. I've used up five of them already. Oh, seeing me like this surprises you, I suppose. Yes, it does. I guess I didn't picture you at such hard work. Not always. I used to be a secretary for the head of a big laundry here in Berlin, but came the brocade and... A book out. Give me a kind of time to speak Yeah, it's all right. You want me to go? Oh, that's all right. You know, came the brocade. No light, no laundry, no position, and nobody else needed a secretary. And in Berlin, when you are between 18 and 55, you must work. Wouldn't they find something easier for you than this? Well, maybe they could, but they didn't. It's hard, but we get the highest ration card, and that's very important here. Say, I hope after all this you're free for dinner tonight. Thank you, yes. I'll book out everything here. Yes, call me up to one. How late do you work? I'll be about 20 minutes. All right. But I've got to do some shopping on my way home. That's okay. I'll wait. Yeah? Good.
you look in the stories, it seems like so little. Before you fly that stuff in, it seems like an awful lot. Yes, but almost 70% of what you bring is coal. Yeah, I guess when you divide up what's left among two and a half million people, that's so much. It's more than we expected. When the Russians blockaded Berlin, we all thought you would leave. There was an old saying, when the bear growls, the eagle will fly. And it happened. But you didn't fly out, you flew in. And we are grateful, very grateful. You know what? You've got a British accent. Where did you get it? <laughs> My teacher at school studied in England. Oh. Well, on you, it sounds good. Thank you. Over there. Two cigarettes. Oh, I got on the bread, too. Well, with our bread nowadays, it might even taste better like that. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'll go down and get your uniform now. Here's a Stieber's bathrobe to put on. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. to bother you. Who was the dining room here? Stephen. My name's McCullough. I wanted to thank you for the roll. And, uh, Tom Burkhardt tells me that you needed the water from my bath. I sure thank you. What are you doing? I'm a Russian spy. You're what? I'm a Russian spy. I count the planes that come to Templeau, huh? Number of planes, time it comes, type of planes. Each three hours I talk to Russians. Each three hours you talk to Russians? Yeah. Aren't you afraid I'll report you? <laughs> Americans know I do this. <laughs> One time they fix telephone for me. <laughs> You're the only one does this? Oh, no. Russians have, like me, a Tegel airfield in the Skato, too. But the official figures on airlift are printed in the paper every day. The Russians must see it. Yeah, but Russians don't believe it. Why? The figures are correct. The Air Force wants people to know. Yeah, you believe this. I believe this. But Russians don't believe it. Russians believe nothing they see, only what other Russians say. <laughs> you know, here in Berlin, on the streets, we have, um, um, my English, it's, uh, no, Wegweiser, you know, to this place, to that place. Signpost. Yeah, signpost. Eh? This way to Andrews Barracks, that way uh, to Angus. Hmm? Russians don't believe it. They say no one could be such a dumbcock to show the way to General Clay's office. <laughs> Tell me something. Yeah. You count the planes. Yeah. The other spies do the same thing. Yeah. Then your figures must agree with the figures in the papers. No, no. Why not? Russians don't believe papers. And so I say sometimes less. Let Russians believe. Make them very happy. <laughs> Here in this house on third, um, uh, what's that, um, uh, Stockwerk, you know. And the uh, floor? Yeah. yeah. On third floor there is living a man, Herr Malcher, and he spies on me. But Russians don't know that Malcher is the husband of my sister. And so Malcher says to Russians, Stieber's a very honest spy. <laughs> <laughs> Who spies on Malcher? His uncle? No, his nephew. Russians have 15,000 Germans as spies. 
They give us Pyox, you know, that are powerful, mm -hmm. with fat, meat, sugar, sometimes clothes and cigarettes, and Russian cigarettes. Bad. <laughs> I would like to work for Americans. Do they have many spies? No, not so many. Only 10,000. 10,000? That means 25,000 spies spying on each other. Things must get a little, uh, a little diminished. Oh, yeah, a little there again, <laughs> But there's also maybe 500 who are spying for both sides. <laughs> we must love. That's necessary. It's a very good thing for, um, uh, it's no work. Unemployment? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good thing for unemployment. Oh, yeah. Commercial. Commercial. Der Schneider ist nicht hier, er ist weggegangen. Wo ist er denn hingegangen? Ich habe eine Uniform hier, die dringend gebracht wird. Seine Frau hat ihn angerufen. Ihr Sohn wurde von russischer Polizei verhaftet. Er ist gleich nach Hause gegangen. Können Sie mir sagen, wo er wohnt? Ich muss unbedingt die Uniform haben. In Charlottenburg, Ulmstraße 22. Hat er Telefon? Nee. Ulmstraße 22? Mhm. Danke. Of all the Schneiders in Berlin, the Russians have got to pinch the son of the one that's got my pants. Well, I can always sit by a window and watch lift planes land at Temple. What do they want him for, anyway? Oh, I don't well, know. Well, the Russians, who knows? Maybe he says something they didn't like. Maybe he is something they need in Russia, electric lights, man, or he can fix engines. Walks into a Russian sector and... Whoosh, auf Wiedersehen. Say, maybe you could go to the tailor's house and bring him back here. Yes, but for me, he might not come if you and an American soldier. What am I going to wear? Oh, no. No, sir. If I'm seen out of uniform, I've had it. They give me ten days, a goodbye strike. Worse than that, they'll take away my PX card. Yeah, be there. Oh, we can get some down there. I only got script. Oh, you can pay me later. What's the matter with him? He says somebody's got coffee and unless it's turned over, he'll search us. Some sick of people, I think. Wochenlang habe ich ihn nach und nach zusammengespart, um ihn Kohlen zu tauschen. She's been saving the coffee to trade it for coal. Stecken Sie doch unter den Hut. Unter den Hut sehen Sie nicht nach. Sie können ihn doch nicht wegnehmen. Ruhig, du kannst sein Bruder sich nicht nicht mitnehmen. Ich bin der Kerl. 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 Ich bin der Kerl.
Da hat sie einen Wenn ich habe jetzt gehört, nicht? Ne? Great, we got the wrong address. They probably didn't arrange it. Nun weiß ich nicht, wann er wieder nach Hause kommen will. She says her husband went to a Russian sector to see whether he could find any trace of their son. And she doesn't know when he'll be back and he's got the key for the store with him. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do. Tell her we'll be back later. Sagen Sie Ihrem Mann, dass wir später wiederkommen, ja? Ja. Auf Wiedersehen. So what are we going to do? We're supposed to meet my friend in half an hour. Well, good morning, Mr. Dillon. Come back here afterwards. Well, like this? Oh, they won't bother you. Okay. How about that? Now the sun is shining. What's the address? Samarin. I know where that is. It's not far from here. We can take the toilet while we're in. Then it's only a short walk. Walk? Wait a second. Get the Samarin in your shoe. Better. Four days are like this in Germany. How long would it have taken till I could put my armor on? Oh, that would have depended on two things. Which part of Germany and which part of me? Like this, so close, months and months. This blockade is a dramatic <laughs> And this was just filled with trees. Oh, it was such a beautiful forest. And on Sundays, families used to walk along here and look at the statues. Who are all these characters? Frederick the Great. Military hero. It's called Sigis Alley, Victory Avenue. They don't look so Sigis anymore, do they? Pretty good tennis sack. What is it you say? They are hot? Yeah, smooth, in the groove, hot. Now, how do you work this dootsy business? Well, in German, the word for you is the no, and... But uh, when you get to know somebody real well... We use the familiar, do. It's like B and thou, the same as on the streetcar. Usually this would take a long time. But when you only got 24 hours and you've used up eight of them already... For such emergencies, we have the dootsy. We link our arms and drink. And then we... Is there any custom for doing this a second time so we can get more familiar? I've never heard of any. Well, let's start one. Guten Tag, Herr Kowalski. Well, if it isn't Fritz. You sure went later than I hurry. Well, that's my uniform with the tailor. Now I can't find the tailor. You're the nicest looking piece of MP babe I've seen in a long time. Oh, Digger, this is Sergeant Kowalski Fabrica. How do you do? Hiya. Oh, where's your, uh... uh... Gertie, she stopped to say hello to something. Here she comes now. This is a real mess for you, huh? But she irons a good shirt so what she looks like to sit down. Sit down, don't spoil it. This is Gertie. Gerda. Gertie's good enough. Sit down. Frederica? Sit down. I'm Danny. Hi. Sit down. You people shake hands more and meet us first. I believe this man over there is trying to attract your attention. Good none. Good none. You speak English very right? well. What did you learn? Night school. She also speaks a little Russian and French. I noticed him when I came in. He looks familiar. What's his name? Gunter Liske. Gunter... No. That doesn't ring a bell. Maybe he works around Temple House. Danny tells me your husband was killed in Russia. Yes. What was he, SS? Do you want to dance? No, and I don't mind answering. My husband was not in the SS. He was drafted. Someday I'd like to meet just one German who was listed. Tell me, Sergeant, in America you have no conscription. Nobody was ever drafted. I heard 11 million. And I read in the paper... Who asked your opinion? And now I suppose you want to know about my father and my mother. My mother was killed in an air raid, and my father went much earlier. He was a professor at the Berlin University. 
And when they burned the books, he spoke out against them violently. They burned his books, and I haven't seen him since. Now, is my record satisfactory, Salty? You mind if she sits with us? Look, I just asked a couple of simple... Insulting questions. I got a couple of insulting answers, so we're even. I'm sorry, okay? Okay. Okay. Your father must have been a very brave man to say those things at that time. Not brave, he just believed very strongly. My father believed, too. That's the wrong thing. Your father was a louse. That's the big reason you people got sucked in by Hitler, this father business. I swear I know that guy from somewhere. From the time German kids are so high, Papa is the boss. He tells you what to say, when to shut up, what to do, what to think. Papa can be the biggest jerk in the world, but what Papa says goes. Then along comes another jerk like Hitler, and he becomes the Papa for all the Papas. Yes, I've read about that father complex many a time. I doubt whether it's true, but if it is, you are certainly doing nothing to cure it. What do you mean? This stupid lug, you're treating Gerda exactly the same way. You tell her what to say, what to think. You know something, you're right. Well, I'm wrong, I admit it. You're absolutely right. From now on, you can disagree with me. Out loud? Sure. And you'll answer questions? Of course. Good. You know, I... Oh, I'm so mixed up. We found out in Germany what was wrong. But to find out what is right is not so easy. I read the Russian German papers, the American German papers, the German German papers. Oh. I want to find out so much about America. Well, sure. Ask me. Democracy. Well, Kowalski, tell me. That's such a stupid question. What is democracy? Democracy is democracy. Yeah? What is it? And what is that? Everybody get back, please. That is the police coming to check up. Let me be the first to call you Private McCullough. Why don't you? If you haven't got any papers, you must get out of here. I can't afford. You see? Yeah, but what is it? Oh, look, I've been trying to tell you. Democracy isn't a, a hunk of bread, something you can point to like that. It's, yeah. it's, well, it's a lot of things, and most of them are up here. Yeah. It's kind of a feeling. Yeah. The way you look at things. Yeah. You understand? No. Oh, you're stupid. You're just plain stupid. But I'm also German. It's the same thing. And if you can't tell me what it is, how do I know if I like it? Take my word for it. I took my father's word for it. You said that was wrong. Oh, I was right. Don't take my word for it. Look, I'll explain it to yeah. you. But will you listen? Will you please use your head?
Yeah? It's a people's government. Yeah, now we're getting someplace. And it's like Russia. That's a people's government, too. Now we're not getting someplace. But, Hank, you just told me that... All right, all right. Let's say Russia is a people's government. Yeah. But it's a kind of people's government where the leaders decide what's best for the people. With us, the people decide what's best for the people. Oh, no, but this Russian soldier I knew, he told me that's not true. He said in America, a few wealthy men who own many newspapers decide everything. They tell the people what to say and what to think. Wait a see. minute, Toots. Now, we had an election some time ago. 90% of the newspapers were against Truman, and the bookies were laying 50 to 1. He'd wind up back behind the shirt counter. So who's president? Truman. Nobody wanted him but the people. Now, you ask your rusky boyfriend when was the last time he was at the polls and saw anybody's name but Stalin. Verwechsel mich mit irgendjemand. Mein Name ist Günther Lütke. Hier sind meine Papiere. You know, I kept looking at you in that restaurant. I knew I'd seen you somewhere. And when you got up and limped, it all came back to me. You're the spitting image of a guy I knew over here during the war when I was in a prison camp. His name was Felix. Sie irren sich. Ich heiße Günther Lütke. Take it easy. I just said you looked like him. Let me tell you about this guy. He had a bad knee just like yours. He couldn't get in the regular army. So they made him a prison guard. He hated it. He wanted action. Interesting English. Your eyes seem to understand English. That's enough. So this Felix started a private little war all his own. He hated the Americans. He hated the Poles. And I was both, so he picked on me. When we went out on work parties, he'd take me off in the woods and make me speak German. Not simple, easy things like Guten Tag and Auf Wiedersehen, but nice little tongue twisters like the Potsdamer Postkutscher, Potsdam Potsdamer Postkutsch Kasten. That's tough enough for a German, but for an American, well, I made mistakes. And when I did, he'd correct me with the butt end of his rifle, right here in the kidneys. It used to swell up like a hunk of dough with too much yeast in it. I got about three lessons a week. It took me about seven months, but I learned German. Of course, I've forgotten some of it, but if the weather changes suddenly or I bend too quick, you'd be surprised how quick it comes back to me. It's a tough way to learn the language, but there was nothing I could do about it. I was a prisoner. I couldn't take a swing at him. Come to think of it, you're uh, sort of in the same spot now. You're a German civilian. If you got a beef with a soldier, you couldn't lift a finger, could you? <laughs> Trying to get to the Russian sector so I couldn't follow you. You know, Felix, I could squeeze until you were as cold and wet as a statue, but it would be easy. <sighs> I'm going to give you an English lesson, Felix. I won't need a gun, but Now, the Germans have a hard time with their Ws, don't they? Well, I'm going to give you something easy to start with. Not too tough. Just say it after me. Which way went the winged whippoorwill? Now, mind, I don't want to hear any Vs in there. I'll have to correct you. Now, try it. Which way went the winged whippoorwill? Which way? No. no, Felix. Which way? Try it again. Which way? Oh, my God. Once more, Felix. Which way? Which way? Keeper! 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 Oh, 
Oh, well, they wouldn't come in here. This is the Russian sector. Oh, great. Oh, well, no, there's nothing to worry about. We just go down... You can go on into... No, no, let's just... Let's just wait here. And then we'll walk back. Into that deep again? No, the best way is just a few blocks from here where the three sectors come together. We can cross over there. Well, what about Hank? Oh, he'll be all right. It will be his word against Gunters, and they'll decide the Germans started it. And Gerda will be there. She'll lie if necessary. Cigarettes and soap are not easy to get. Oh, why didn't I bring my identity card? No identity. Do I look Russian to you? Where do you live? The Temple Hope American Tech. You? He, he's my husband. He was he was shot in the throat during the war. He can't speak. What's the matter? These Ruskies giving you trouble? Oh, same old thing, mate. Border quarrel. Looks to me like they're way over on your side. Used to be a line here someplace. No, can't make anything of it, though. It's been trouble now. Let's get this business settled once and for all. Let's call a meeting. Yes, and I'll ring the duty officer. Mind now, don't let them get these people away from you. You mean they, they haven't been back here at all? No, and they haven't called on the telephone, too. Oh, it's all right. We're friends. There's, where's the room? We'll wait. Right here. Oh, a uh, trunk fell on my hand. Will you heat me some water so I can soak it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn on the lamp, will you? I don't suppose anybody around here's got a drink. Yeah. Don't make some coffee. Yes. Oh, but I don't know these people to use up their gas. Some cigarettes. You don't feel better? No. Your hand hurts more? It's not my hand. For seven years, I've been waiting for the satisfaction of beating that face in. So now I've done it, so why do I feel this way so dirty? It's better than feeling good. Go make the coffee, will you? Oh, man. 
is 14 meters from that curbstone. Storm's come out. What do they say? Oh, well, the colonel states that the boundary is not 14 meters from this corner stone, but from that one. Let's measure from over there. Fair enough. good English, but they like good coffee. They'll bring their fiddle. We'll have a real uh, gemütlicher Abend. So? Well, Felix knew if he said anything, I'd mention his phony papers, and I'm sorry. when they asked who started it, we both said you did. That was nice. I figured you'd get away. Yeah, sure. What about the tailor? Can't work at night, no light. I'm gonna pick it up first thing in the morning. You can't stay at the base looking like that. I could go to my sister's. You could have mine. No, 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 thanks. It's been arranged. I'm going to stay here. Frederick is going to stay with the lady across the hall. Herr Stieber, Flugzeug kommen. Missed it. Oh, I missed it. That one was only American propaganda. Hotel is am kein Sand, und Klavier kein Pedal. Und Krachel, so heißt dort der Sex. Im Grand Hotel ist es mondäne. Doch dort ist es tausendmal schöner in einem kleinen Kabinenal. Spielt Grammophon mit leisem Ton in Englisch mal. Dort genügen zwei Moskalein, um ein paar Stunden so glücklich zu sein. In einem kleinen Kapitänal klopft manches Herz so hinauf bis zum Hals und kein Papierlicht sich dort dran bewusst drückt der Ohr ganz diskret ein Auge zu. Don't you think you ought to get over to the hospital and have somebody look at that hand right away? That's all right. Steve here tells me he was an actor in the States for five years. So here I'm the student prince. I've traveled all over America. Big cities, little cities. But you must tell me about this. 11.30, I didn't know it was that late. Well, so I won't get too much sleep. I don't mind. She wants to learn. That's good. Tell me, what did you like best about America? The way the Americans don't like it. What? I mean what they used to say against the government. Oh, on the radio, in hotels, trains, barbershops. Oh. Good night, Frau Kirchner. Hi, Dr. Sieber. Good night. 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 Oh, bless them. I've been too mute. Good night. 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 Oh, I get it. Come on, knucklehead. Good night. Good night. Take some advice from a guy whose batting average is pretty good in this league. Don't wait for the floater to cross the plate. This way. I was just telling him how to get the first base. First base? What's that? Well, it's a... Look, it's tough enough explaining democracy to you, Klaus. Let's not start on baseball. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Danny. That's all right. That's all right. I'm going out to sleep. Well, I don't know how you stand that noise. Every three minutes, I go nuts. Well, you know it means cold and food, you don't mind. It's only the silence on foggy nights that keeps us awake. Shifted. They're taking off this way now. Boy, they're doing better than one every three minutes. What time is it? A little after three. Three? What are you ironing at this hour for? Today we've got electricity from three to five. Well, that's a pleasant time. Who figured that one out? All the big power plants are in the Russian sector. There's only one here, and that isn't big enough to supply all the districts in the western sectors at once. So they divide it up. Is it my shirt? You shouldn't have done that. I hope it's all right. It's so long since I ironed a shirt. When you look at me like that, I feel secure and no fear. I want to draw closer and no way. Danny, I think you love me just a little. More than a little. More than just a little. That's only one of the reasons. Yeah, but still, you hated him for it. And the Russians say in America, Jews are kept out of certain hotels, schools. And you're right. It shouldn't be. It stinks. Uh -huh. But where did you find out about it? Well, I read it in the book. An American book? Yeah. Where'd you get it? From a friend. Where'd the soldier get it? The P.S. Well, look, stupid, that's your answer. Here's a book that points out something pretty awful about America. Uh -huh. But it's written by an American, printed in America, it's a bestseller in America, and sent here by the American government to be sold in the PXs. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Look, the next time you're in the Russian sector, do me a favor, will you? Uh -huh. Get me a copy of an anti-Russian book written by a Russian living in Russia, printed in Russia, and sent here by the Russian government. Do that, and I'll give you a month's salary. You get the point? No! No. In America, it is not wrong to be wrong if you say it's wrong. What do you got stuck on your shoulders? A cantaloupe? I didn't say that. I'm only... I know, but I... Like the new look? Just adorable, especially the midriff. Oh. Well, at least you're still a sergeant. I thought maybe they shrunk you to a corporal. I think they cleaned it with reducing pills. <laughs> you did a nice job of pressing, though, don't you think? Which one are you going out on? 107, right here. How'd it go, Esther? Very interesting. Interesting? What'd you do, go to the library? Yeah, we read Schopenhauer together till 6 in the morning. Hey, Mac, what happened to you? They sent me to the cleaners. It's amazing how much both of still want to keep on living. Yeah, I guess it hasn't been easy. But... I never realized, just... Staying alive could be a 24-hour job. And I uh, suppose she wanted to know all about America? No, she didn't. She knows. Just friends are right to her from St. Louis. But why don't you come to her? She's a smart dame. She pays you fast. You're a nice, sweet, intelligent, understanding schmo. So with you, she's using a slow sympathy routine. I guarantee you with me, just like that. Why don't you stop jumping to conclusions? Or at least use them where they fit. They don't happen to fit here. 
Look, she's had it. So have a lot of other people in this town. But she didn't want to talk about it. I made her tell me. Yeah, I know. You just have to drag it out of these poor people. I feel so sorry for them. Every Sunday at 4 o'clock, I come here and bleed. You know, there are some things they just can't stand to talk about. Like Rotterdam and Warsaw and Coventry and Liedichy, Belsen and Dachau and Buchenwald. Did she talk to you about these things? No! This is something that happened 10,000 years ago. That the Germans never heard of. That they can't remember. But they didn't get meat last week. This they remember, and this they feed the suckers like you. Oh. What am I supposed to blame all that on a, on a girl who was, what, 15 at the time? I've been trying to say ever since I... That wasn't your fault. But why did you lie to me about that? Perhaps to make you more sympathetic. When you have to live by the generosity of others, you learn to make yourself pitiful and brave. When you live in a sewer, you soon discover that the sewer rat is best equipped to survive. Well, look around you, then. That's why we lie. To escape from it for even a moment now and then.
I've discovered, Sergeant, that all such applications made at 8.30 in the morning are always canceled a few days later. Why don't you wait till about 5 this afternoon? Well, it's not like that, sir. I was on duty last night. Oh. Well, I guess I can dispense with the talk I give the kids. I guess you're old enough to know your own mind. Well, ask the Sergeant. He'll give you the necessary papers. And I'll go over the case as soon as you fill them out. But you must remember, Sergeant, that if and when I give my permission, the marriage cannot take place until 30 days before your departure. I understand that, sir. Uh, I noticed by the paper this morning rotation is starting. Is there any indication of when my number might come up? That's all pretty new. But I wouldn't count on anything for less than 60 days. Thank you, sir. You get used to it. Want a cup of coffee? No, I can't. I gotta get back. They're trying to make the turnaround in 14 minutes. Will you take this? Give it to Frederica. The paper she's got to fill out. Sucker, why don't Look, you... the only permission I need is to my squadron commander, not from you. Will you deliver it? If it clears up, I will. If not, I'll give it to Trudy. If you want to go from one place to another, you don't have to have permission from the authority. No, all you need is a transfer. Just pack your bag and go. Unwahrscheinlich. But, but in Europe, it is not so easy to work together like that. You crowds wouldn't try to give the world a hot foot every 25 years, it might be. Look, even just in Western Europe, we have so many different people, different languages, different customs. Well, it would be impossible. What do you mean, impossible? All right, suppose you take an island. And aren't you put Germans and French, huh? Mm -hmm. And English and Irish and Jews okay, and Okay, okay, you don't have Italian. to take a cook's tour. I get the idea. What are you trying to say? But what would happen with all these people on the same island? In five minutes, they'd kill each other. When they made Snow White, they should have got you for dopey. Ever hear of a place called Manhattan? Uh, Manhattan, yeah. Yeah, it's an island, part of New York City, oh, just yeah, like yeah. you're talking about. Twelve miles long and three miles wide. Now, you know what we got in New York? We got more Irish than they have in Dublin, more Jews than there are in Palestine, more Germans than you got in Dusseldorf, and more Italians than they have in Naples, plus a half a million Poles besides the Swedes, the Greeks, and the French. They all get along all right. No, I'm not saying they love each other, but they've learned to live together. Is it true? No, no. We built New York just for propaganda. Nobody lives there. It's inhabited by... The... Hey, Stever! Good talk, Steven. Good talk, Van Hi. Hey. Uh, will you give this to Frederica? It's from Danny. Yes, that's that. Uh, Certainly. Okay. Wiedersehen. 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 Uh, what's
Danny, sagen Sie, komm weiter, Gassi, mit dem Modell kam nicht mit der Post. Ja. coming through faster than we thought. Yes, sir, but what about my marriage application? I'm trying to get Berlin now to see what we can do about it. Hello? Is Major Bolt there? Major Bolt! I can't hear you! Speak louder! Major Bolt! Baker! Abel! Love! Hair! Yes, Bolt! These long-distance calls are murder. I think the German telephone system is made out of chicken wire. I hope we can speed up your application. Perhaps I could go home a couple of weeks later. Oh, no, Sergeant. That would mean 50 forms in triplicate and cost the government at least 30,000. Hello! Major Bolt? This is Major Hetzel! Who? Major Hetzel at Ryan, Maine! You'll have to speak louder. I can't hear you. Yes, louder! Love, Obo, Uncle, No, Easy, Roger! Okay. Now, here's the dope, Sergeant. Instead of sending your papers through the regular channels, they'll give them to your pilot on your next trip up. He'll bring them to me, I'll sign them in the 18 places and get them to you. I certainly thank you, sir. But what about that month before departure regulation? This is classified as an extraordinary condition. Circular 3, paragraph D, subsection 12. You can marry her any time before your departure time Friday. But she lives in Berlin, sir. I know. Get one of the off-duty engineers to ride up with you, and he can work the trip back. Yes. Thank you very, very much. Okay. But I wish you guys would stay single. comes one of our pigeons home. And it looks like he's gonna roost for a few days. Ah. 
I'm afraid not, Sergeant. It says here stateside departures will be on schedule. You will leave by train tomorrow for Bremerhaven and home by boat. Thank you. 53rd Troop Carrier Squadron, Major Ethel speaking. Yes, sir, Colonel. Right away, sir. <laughs> and we hope it will lift enough here for takeoff starting at 1,200 hours. With Temple off partially and intermittently open starting at 1,400 hours. It is important to land every ton we can, but your lives are more important. You will make your GCA approach, and when you have let down to your minimums, if you do not have sufficient visibility, pull up and come back. Taxi conditions at takeoff position here are not good. Proceed cautiously. Here is your time hack. Okay, in 20 seconds, it will be 11.15. Seven. Keep your shirt on. How's your visibility? Can't complain. How's yours? Look, wise guy, how far can you see? Well, I can see up in the tower. What floor you need to shave? Okay, it's your neck. You're clear. Pardon the expression. To take off. Three seven, Roger. Bye bye. Big Easy 37 from Temple Off Tower cleared to 6,500 feet. Cruise 170, regional 3009. Remain on this frequency and give check call over one, see over. You're up. Sorry, Mag. It's a butte. Federal four. Pull the firewall shut off now. Got next ground four. Gas off. Trail number four. Pull the fire bottle. Switch off. Generator off. Boots off. How does it look back there? Not the same, sir. Maybe a little worse. You ready good? It's good, Al. Better give him a call. Half a lot of this is Big Easy 37. Number four is on fire, we can't get it out. Much emergency landing instructions, over. We don't have to look so happy about it. All right, Big Easy 37 from tower QSY to frequency 14058 to approach control for emergency clearance, over. 
Emergency, do not acknowledge. Big Easy 37 with number four engine on fire will make an emergency landing on runway 27 left and to the west. Stand by. Big Easy 37. We have you identified. There's nothing between you and the slot. Crash crew standing by. Now steer left 180 degrees, bringing you on crosswind leg. Start descent to 1500 feet QSY to Jigsaw 140.58. Jigsaw 37 coming in on emergency landing. Do you have him? Roger. Big Easy 37, this is Jigsaw. How do you read? Over. Roger, 37, understand 5 by 5. Make final cockpit check, gear in the green. Now turn to a heading of 270. This is your final approach. Maintain altitude of 1200 until further advised. Five miles from touchdown on course. Do not acknowledge any further transmissions for the remainder of this run. Slightly left, steer right to 273. You're approaching on course perfectly. Steer left to 271. Your new heading, 271. You're on course approaching glide path. Lose altitude at 750 feet per minute. You're on course heading 271. Touchdown on course going 50 feet low on glide path. Approaching building area. Adjust your rate of descent. You're now 60 feet low. Still 60 feet low. Adjust your rate of descent, please. That's better. Glide path improving now. Steer right 271. Three quarters mile from touchdown. Descent, please. That's it. One quarter mile from touchdown. Approaching end of runway. Today. <laughs> we haven't got time for this kind of thing. But tell me, how oh, don't cry quiet. Just listen. We gotta move fast. I gotta get to the consulate right away and get some paper stamped. But look, you gotta go home, get dressed, and meet me as soon as you can at the Temple of Burgermeister. Hank and Gerda will be there. They're our witnesses. Now, where, where, where's your stuff? There. Come in. 
Get your coat on. We got to be witnesses at the funeral. Max Marion, that dame. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, look alive. Get moving. I don't feel like going. Hmm. I don't feel like going. Look, I don't care what you feel like. Get your coat on. You treat me just like my father did. Get your coat on. Do this, do that. Keep quiet. Sit down. Stand up. I'm tired of it, and I'm not going to stand for it anymore. What's the matter? Are you plastered or something? What have you been drinking? Words. Good words. I've been reading this. Your Constitution, the Bill of Rights, what Lincoln said, and Wilson and Roosevelt. No, don't let it go to your head. And after what I read, I see something now. You are a disgrace to America, and they shouldn't send people like you here. No, enough is enough. Who do you think you're talking to? It doesn't matter. Well, I... I can't say what I want. Article 1 says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's what it says, you big, stupid jackass. One more crack like that, and so help me, I'll knock you from here to Potsdam. All right, go ahead. Hit me, you... Stormtrooper! Now, wait a minute. You're not yelling at some crummy crouch, you know. I'm the guy that brings you the cigarettes and the candy and the soap and the stockings and the I'm coffee. I'm sick of you and your coffee. Get out of here or I'll have you thrown out. Right, and you. I got the perfect price for Article 3 says, No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So get out and stay out and don't go back because of you. Baby, now you got it. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Don't let anybody push you around. Not even me. That's democracy. Now you got it. You can drink your cigarettes and your candy and... That's your baby. Keep it. Hit the boom door and you get your first paper. Yes, come on. You're a citizen, honey. Thank you. I mean, Gerda, please put your coat on, baby. We'll be late. Gehen auf dem Postamt, das Geld können Sie mir später wiedergeben. Wunderbar. Schönen Dank. Bis zu dann. Tschüss. Wieder Tag. Papers to fill out. Fine. 
You have to wait. The burgermeister's hitching somebody else. I oh. didn't know whether you had time to buy a ring. I brought this. It was handed down to me from my grandmother. Beautiful. Where did you get it? My grandmother. Oh, yeah. Daddy, I'm so happy. But also a little sad that you are going back to America tomorrow. Yeah. When will I come in a month? I think it will be longer than that. Oh, no, Danny, no. I'm afraid so. Where will you go, St. Paul? Maybe St. Paul. I might go to St. Louis. Why St. Louis? Why not? A nice place to live, don't you imagine? much, but I want to see it. And if everybody who wants something different and better looks for it someplace else, what happens here? No, I'll stay. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. He says somebody heard over the radio the Russians are going to lift the blockade. Yeah, What are you thanking us for? Say, you think this thing is really over? When they start putting the seats back in these things, then I'll believe it. Well, I don't know. If they can take off when the birds won't even fly, I guess a blockade isn't much of a weapon. <laughs> 